What if I told you the most exciting builds on Instagram aren't even real cars? These are renders, outrageous machines built with 3D modeling software. Social media posts of these cars have exploded in the past two years with new artists posting every day. And it's got me wondering, how can this art change the automotive industry? Okay, before I talk about Instagram, we need to talk about the history of automotive design in the context of the automotive industry. That way, we'll see how Instagram car art is so different from the formal stuff. Then, we'll meet some artists and talk about their processes and influences. Then, we'll take a look at one production car I think was directly influenced by these artists. After that, I'll give you a short list of artists I think you should follow right now. Finally, I'll get sappy and talk about why I think fusing art and cars is so cool. Automotive design is an art form steeped in tradition. Most concepts for any car you've ever seen started as a sketch on a piece of paper penned by an automotive designer with formal training. These people went to school to design cars. I went to school to learn how to party. And guess what? I got my masters with a focus on keg stands. Generally, these designers can't just design whatever they want and the factory will make it. Company leadership decides what to build based off of market demand, and the designers have to ride the fine line between sketching a car that looks amazing, but also conforms to parameters like safety, practicality, and desirability. After a car is drawn out and approved, then the designers have to bring that idea into the real world by modeling the car in clay. You've probably seen this before, right? Slick B-roll of designers scratching scraping away at a car, getting the shape just right. There's probably a guy with glasses, and since the clay is the same color as my skin, it kind of looks like they're building some horrific human-car hybrid, kind of like that episode of Full Metal Alchemist with the, the Chimera. Can we play now? These clay models are actually still very valuable in the industry, despite the fact that VR exists. That's because you can actually walk up and touch these things and see them in the real world. You can tell that a real life person worked on it and that's why they still use this old school technique. The end result of that OEM pipeline is usually a concept car, the kind that you see unveiled at an auto show when they pull a shiny cover off the car and people go, whoa. And then inevitably the production model is way different, which is fine, okay? Concepts are all about drumming up interest in your brand and showing people where you're going. Just look at Kia's process for the Stinger. First, we saw the GT concept in 2011, then the GT4 Stinger in 2014, then finally the consumer version of the Stinger in 2017. It changed a lot, but there are still a lot of elements still present in the final form, just like that poor girl's personality was still in that dog chimera thing. This pipeline uses the art of automotive design to drum up a ton of hype for automakers. These concepts get tons of exposure on auto magazine sites and social media Media, but it all started with a trained artist putting pencil to paper, which is a little different than how a lot of Instagram-based artists got their start. I was lucky enough to interview three of the most well-known render artists in the world right now. Kaisal Salim, John Sabal, and Ash Thor. If you're any level of car nerd, you've probably seen these guys' work on your Instagram Discover page. A common theme between these guys is that they're not formally trained in automotive design. They either started in fields like graphic design or just taught themselves how to use rendering software. For example, Kaisel is the most Instagram famous of these guys, but he started doing graphic design when he was 17, then started working at EA Games when he was 21, doing concept art and environments for Need for Speed 2015. Ash Thorpe was also working in the gaming field, doing menu design for games like Call of Duty, as well as doing art design for movies like Ghost in the Shell. And John Sabal has been doing comic book art longer than I've been alive. These guys are artists, first and foremost. So we know a little bit about these artists, but how do they actually make their art? For a long time, I thought that renderers were just really good with Photoshop and got their work done that way, but it's actually a lot more impressive. Take a look at this shot by Kaiser. First, it looks like a photo, right? Well, it's not. Nothing in this shot is real. He had to model the car himself, then modify it, then give the scene color, and then on top of that, he had to take a photo in the digital space. 
If you want to learn how to take good photos in the real world, check out this video right here, Larry Chen taught me. These artists are different than auto designers though, and I don't mean for that to take anything away from either side. I think they're in a symbiotic relationship. The designers make a product, then the artists make it their own. The designers probably think it's pretty cool they made something that inspired art. One common trend in the auto render space is the use of sci-fi imagery. Both Keisel and Ash use dystopian and cyberpunk imagery in their work, which helps sell the realism of the renders. A tricked out McLaren P1 with Le Mans aero wheels and quad exhaust might be hard to believe when it's parked in a suburban neighborhood, but you bathe that sucker in neon and park it on wet asphalt, that's cyberpunk AF. I believe that car exists in that universe. Examples like this, this, and this harken back to a retro vision of the future, one influenced by films like Blade Runner, Total Recall, and Back to the Future. And that's because these artists are huge fans of those films. And who isn't? The whole vaporwave aesthetic is based on this style. Retro futurism is huge right now. I think that guys like Keisel have helped bring that style into the car world mainstream. And one automaker went all out with it. So I present you the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck. You've seen the memes and you've seen the hate probably, but in all that noise, I don't think the Cybertruck got its full due, at least from me anyway. I said it on my Twitter, I like the Tesla truck. It's different and if it's anything like Tesla's other models, it'll probably drive pretty well too. Render artists were quick to put out their own spins on the truck, including our friend Keisel. The Cybertruck might be controversial or even ugly, but I applaud Tesla for doing something completely different than everyone else in the market. That's precisely the reason it got so much press. We've never seen an automaker produce something like this. Like, this is a truck that is because not designed for truck owners. You like, you, uh, you like Thomas Edison made Cybertruck, it's pretty new. Cyber Truck was cool, right? The ridiculous design of the new Tesla Cyber Truck. This is very I'm divisive. Gonna get it. We have, however, seen it in the movies. Blade Runner, Robocop, and that one with Stallone in the Pizza Hut all had pointy cars. Now all restaurants are Pizza Hut. No way. And here is where I'm gonna make a bold statement, okay? I think the artists we talked about earlier might have had a hand in making the Cyber Truck a reality. Those guys are clearly influenced by those films and use those themes in their art. That style then made its way into the ethereal automotive zeitgeist. Tesla is a pretty online company. Elon, he loves his memes. I don't think it's a huge stretch to imagine a Tesla designer going through their Instagram page and seeing Keisel or Ashes or John's work, okay? They could have been like, sick, I love sci-fi. What if I made a pyramid into a truck? And bam, cyber truck. If the Cybertruck does well, it could change the whole industry. It'll tell other automakers, hey, use your imagination, go big, don't be afraid. Come on guys, maybe, just maybe, we could see some seriously crazy shit in the next decade and I'm all for it, okay? So giving Instagram artists credit for making the Cybertruck might be a little lofty, I'll admit it. But these artists affect the industry in other ways too. Maybe most importantly, by showing people what is possible to either acclaim or some criticism. If you don't follow Keisel, Asher, John on Instagram, you should definitely do that now. It's a must do for Wheelhouse fans. I also have some smaller artists I think you should check out, which I will list right now with some of their art, okay? Abby Melick Design, Jake Car Art, Adri 53 Customs, Harada V, WNLVD, Paul Fuentes, Aaron Beck, Rain Prisk, and Robert Designs, just to name a few. I wish I could do what these guys do, but I can't. And maybe the coolest part is that it gives everyone involved some sort of release. The art is therapeutic, right? There's a release when the artist finally get to post their finished work, but there's another feeling on the viewer's end too that's almost like a, like a thank you. I'm a horrible artist and could never put what I visualize in my head onto a piece of paper. So when I see someone else get close, I'm like, thank you. Thank you very much. Now I can see what I want. It sounds very woo woo, but I believe that. Not to mention that artists like Keisel are designing body kits now too, finally bringing their vision from the screen into the real world, which will strengthen their influence over the industry even more. It's freaking cool. Do you like what these guys do with these uh, crazy renders? Are you offended by putting a, a wide body kit on a Lamborghini Miura? I think it's pretty tight. Let me know on Instagram at Nolan J Sykes and Twitter, same thing. Follow Donut at Donut Media. Be kind, I'll see you next time. Go make some art. Now I'm a horrible artist. 
because I, I never practice. Like, I'm like, I wish I could draw, but I never draw. Like, I get surprised that I can't play my guitar anymore. It's like, I haven't touched it in like six months. 